So very good morning to all of you. Today, I'm going to talk about the direct data functions or the impulse functions. Direct data function represent an extremely large force. Large force acting for a minutely small interval of time. It is denoted by delta t minus a. Delta t minus a is equal to zero when t not equal to a. Delta t minus a equal to infinity when t equal to a. Its graph is represented by an arrow at t equal to a. The arrow represents the very large force. t not equal to a, delta t minus a is equal to zero. Okay, when a equal to zero, we have delta t. So similarly, delta t is equal to zero when t not equal to zero. Delta t equal to infinity when t equal to zero. Okay. When a equal to zero, is actually at the vertical axis, we have a very large force represented by an arrow. When t not equal to zero, delta t is zero. That's why its graph is look like nothing there. Only vertical and horizontal axis. Area of the direct delta function is always one. Or is given by the integral of delta t minus a dt from p to q is always equal to one as long as a is inside the interval p to q. A is inside the interval p to q. To prove this, the integral delta t minus a dt from p to q is divided into three regions. The region p to a, a to a, a to q. Okay. As we know, direct delta function is equal to zero in the interval p to a, a to q. That's why this is zero. It is zero. Okay, when t equal to a, delta t is a very large variable value represented by an arrow. That's why it consists only big value without uh, the width. That's why the area is equal to 1. Okay, and then we have number 5. The integral of f t delta t minus a dt from p to q if a is inside the interval p to q, the result of this integral is actually equal to f a. Okay. To prove this, again, we break the interval of p q to p a, a to a, a to q. And we know that direct delta function, delta p minus a, is equal to 0 from p to a, and from a to q. Once when t equal to a, we have f a. We have f a. Then we know that the area of direct delta function is equal to 1. Once we get f a. Again, this is very useful integral. Delta, uh, inter sorry, integration of the f t delta t minus a dt from p to q is equal to f a. Example 1, evaluates integral of t squared plus 4, delta t minus 2, dt from 1 to 3. Notice that 2 here is inside the interval 1 to 3. Turns to evaluate this integral, what we need to do is just substitute t equal to 2 in the functions ft. We get 2 squared plus 4, which is equal to 8. And simple number 2 evaluates the integral cos 60 delta t minus pi over 2 dt from 0 to 5. Similarly, we just need to substitute t equal to pi into the function cos 60, where we get cos 3 pi, which is equal to negative 1. Now, 
we look at the Laplace transform of delta t minus a. Its result is exponent negative a s. To prove this, we make use back the integral, the delta integral of f t delta t minus a d t from p to q, which is equal to f a. And from the definition of Laplace transform, okay, we have a Laplace transform for delta t minus a will be equal to the integral of exponent negative s t delta t minus a d t. To evaluate this integral, what we need to do is just substitute t equal to a into exponent negative s t, where we will get exponent negative a s. So, we have okay, the Laplace transform of delta t minus a is equal to exponent negative a s. Laplace transform for delta t in a equal to 0. So substitute a equal to 0 into exponent negative a s, we have exponent 0, which is equal to 1. Laplace transform for f t delta t minus a will be equal to f a exponent negative a s. To prove this, again, okay, we make use of the definition of Laplace transform where we have the integral of exponent negative s t f t delta t minus a d t from 0 to infinity. To evaluate this okay, integral, we substitute t equal to a into f t, then in, into exponent negative s t. Once we get f a exponent negative a s. Okay, um, okay, um, because okay, the limit of 0 to infinity, we break it into 0 to a, a to a, a to infinity. As we know that delta t minus a equal to 0 and t not equal to 0. Delta t minus a also equal to 0 when t not equal to a. Then to evaluate this integral, we substitute t equal to a into f t into exponent negative s t, where we get f a exponent negative a s. Okay, example, okay. Find the Laplace transform for 6 delta t minus a. So we have 6 exponent negative 4s. Laplace transform for t cubed delta t minus a. So we will substitute t equal to 2 into t cubed. We have 2 cubed exponent negative 2s. Make use of this formula. Laplace number for ft delta t minus a is fa exponent negative as. The Laplace transform for sin 3t delta t minus pi over 2. Okay, we we'll substitute t equal to pi into sin 3 pi. A 3t, sorry. So sin 3 pi over 2. Exponent negative pi over 2 as sin 3 pi equal to negative 1. So you get negative exponent negative pi over 2 as. Then the Laplace transform for cos 2t delta t. Where in this case, a equal to 0. We have cos 0. Multiply exponent 0, which is 1. Cos 0 equal to 1. Okay. As a summary, we have okay, delta t minus a is equal to 0 when t not equal to a. Delta t minus a equal to infinity when t equal to a. The graph of delta t minus a is represented by an arrow at t equal to a. When a equal to 0, okay, delta t is equal to 0 when t not equal to 0. Delta t equal to infinity when t equal to 0. 
its graph is like nothing there, only vertical and horizontal axis. So delta t minus a dt p to q is the integral of delta t minus a dt from p to q is equal to 1 as long as a is in the interval p to q. The integral of ft delta t minus a dt from p to q is equal to f a as long as a is in the interval p to q. The Laplace transform for delta t minus a is equal to exponent negative a s. Laplace transform for f t delta t minus a is equal to f a exponent negative a s.